Okay, what's going on guys? We're going to go over the best comeback tactics in FC24. You're seeing a lot of more pros player using this. It's a very, very good tactic. I've tested it myself and it's more superior than a 4-4-2. Now, generally speaking, when you play a comeback tactic, there's two things you want to do. You don't want to play a formation in contrary to people's opinions like a 3-5-2. It's because when you're defending, you got a back five. And then your team sinks at this narrow state. And then these areas over here is where you'll get destroyed. Where your opponent will keep lobbing the ball from four back to four back to four back. So a three at the back is not a no-go. Is, is a no-go if you're defending in a three center back formation. Um, same with the five back. You know, even if you look at a five back formation, you're going to have a five back. And the wing areas is what you want to occupy. That is why you don't want to use any narrow formations. You want to use all the wide formations. The 4-4-2 second variation is a defensive variation. The 442 flat is known to be one of the best ones because you have two centre mids and you naturally cover most of the pitch. It's very easy to press the ball, especially with 71 depth, the team press for you automatically. So that is why the formation choice itself is the most important. Um, but ever since last year, um, I was just analysing some pros gameplay and I was just seeing more 424 and I used it and it just works so well. The left wings and right wings, the formation is more attacking. We're going to go through the tactics and instructions. It's important that you listen to the reasons why I do things. Because a lot of things would make sense, not now, but it will do towards the end of the video. The most important thing is put everyone on comeback and defense. Um, this is the biggest thing that I always see people get confused with. They're like, well, if I'm losing, then you want to put players on stay forward. Why do you want players to come back? Well, this is the thing. If you want to press, just like Roll Life, you have to press together as a unit to press the ball. You can't have, for example, because if you have these players on stay back, on stay forward, for example, then you will have your opponent playing in between your attacking line and your midfield line. And that is where you'll get destroyed because you'll run out with your centre mid and your opponent will easily score a goal. But not only will you be 2-0 behind, you will now be 3-0 behind. So it's very important you put everyone on comeback and defence. Unless you might see some of the top tier elite, top tier elite and pro players do it. It's because they're using teammate contain and they're pressing and they're running back manually with the strikers. That's the difference. So I put all the players on comeback and offense, left wing and right wing on comeback and offense, get into the box for a cross and get it behind for both the players. Both the strikers on comeback and defense stay central. You can use get it behind. This is what I prefer for quick counters when I win the ball back. However, you can, of course, use balanced if you want to. You don't have to use get it behind. The key thing is you want quick players here. So if you've got someone with 80 pace like Griezmann and you're losing 2-0, sub him off and put someone who's got good pace on. Pace is the quickest thing to apply pressure to your opponent. The better pace you have, the faster you'll press your opponent. Then a centre mid instructions. Um, I'll put them on the stay back, uh, cover centre and balance for both. You can experiment putting them both on get forward. This is more like very attacking. Like this is like kind of gung-ho. But you can put them both on get forward. Um, this way, when you when you win the ball back, so they'll stay centre mids. When you win the ball back, they will then go attacking as centre mids. Um, they got cover centre is very very important. The thing that we've not done is the left back and right back. We've not put them on uh, join the attack. This is the biggest mistake I see a lot as well. Um, you have to be honest with yourself here. You have to ask yourself: Are you a top top tier player? Then maybe you can commit one of these left backs forward. The reason why is, if you have special high depth and you win the ball back. When you get counter attack, these players are going to be getting inside the box and you're going to have literally no one at the back. So even if you play against the 4-4-2, you're going to have literally a 4 on 3. Or worst case, you bring up two, two of these players, you're going to have four players of your opponents on two of your center backs. So understand that you have to understand, am I good enough to play with one left back? But that's the truth, okay? You, you have to be honest with yourself. Me personally, I don't even take a risk because I know if I lose the ball, I'd rather defend with a back four. And if you need to, just do what I do. Always supplement the attack with the L1 trigger. Do it yourself. I don't, I don't even, th even pro players don't have both of these players on, uh, on get forward. They only would use that with an L1 trigger, or maybe they might use attacking four back deep back tactics. The center backs, you leave them on stay back. And the goalkeeper, you can put sweeper keeper. I think it does work uh, really well. Um, but personally, I just don't like using it. But of course, you can feel free to do that. It probably would work for most of you guys. But my personal preference, I just don't like it. I like to control the goalkeeper myself and bring him out when I feel it's important. Um, now, going over tactics, this is also important. The main thing that makes this formation is 71 depth, okay? You cannot use uh, another a, a low depth, which is pretty self-explanatory. Um, but the good thing is with 71 depth is because of the auto press patch number, update number five came out. They've not fixed pressing. EA, come on, please. What are you actually doing? Come on, fix 71 depth, please. But you don't need to use any of the pressure tactics. Um, you can use pressure on heavy touch as a more conservative one. 
Um, constant pressure would be more the gung ho. So if you're losing two and all seven minutes and you need to win the ball back quickly, then of course you can use constant pressure. Otherwise, you can use balance. Balance is a bit more of a conservative approach. The good thing with balance is you can always use a deeper tactics team press to supplement your pressing style. But if you want to go gunko, constant pressure. Otherwise, I think press out position loss is a good combination. Don't go too extreme. The width is important. Although the 4-4-2, same thing as 4-4, is a quite a wide formation naturally. When you defend, you're going to be defending in a 4-4-2. These players are going to come back. You want to be as wide as possible. Contrary to belief, people want to, they, they think that you want to press from a narrow perspective. You don't. Because your opponent could just lob the ball from full back to full back. That's the way they're going to beat you. They're going to back to the goalkeeper and lob it back to the full back. You want to be as wide as possible to cover most areas in the pitch. You would see even in real life, all teams basically use some sort of 4 4 2 or 4 3 3 with a centre mid, basically becoming a striker. Like in real life, you'll see this player kind of playing like, like, 4 3 3, and then this player kind of running forward uh, and making a makeshift 4 4 2 when the situation is there, a the situation arises to press two center backs. But of course, you can't do that. And feet in FC, that's more of a real life tactic. Um, I think long ball is important. So when you win the ball back, players make those runs going forward. You can experiment with fast build up play, um, it does work if you play quickly. I think this would work more against players. Like if you're up against, let's say you're fa facing a player that's like rank three and below. I think fast ball play is a good thing to use. The truth is, once you go towards the better players, um, they know how to neutralize the fast build up situation. You're going to have to be go forward, kind of play for one attack, and be a bit more passive, kind of recycle the ball. If you're in a high divisions, you know what I mean. You can't just get the ball from your defense, go straight to attack, and take a goal and take a shot. No, you got to be a bit more passive. You got to recycle the ball. You got to play the ball outside the box. You just got to pass the ball around, try to find an entrance when you're outside the box and then take a shot towards goal. So I would say long, long ball is probably a good one as well. Uh, it's kind of the mix of both. Balance is good, but it's a bit too passive in my opinion. So long ball is the way to go. Direct passing, probably the best one, especially for the cutbacks this year. Direct passing is definitely the best. Now for attacking width, um, there's two, there's, the way that I do is I use the low width and hug the sidelines uh, because that way I can manipulate the width as I want to by default will be quite let's say, let's say this is on 30 by default it's on 30 and I can always manipulate um, the width myself with hug the sidelines the d-pad tactic however you want to be wider um, the reason for this is let's say someone is becoming more defensive um, they're going to be defending in a back four or a back five um, realistically they're going to be very narrow so if you have your your attacking front four very narrow they're just going to block you out. The way you're going to get through is down the wings for the cutback. You need the width in your team, um, especially if they've got a fire back. If they've got a fire back and you basically got a front four like this when you're attacking, they're not going to do anything. You don't believe me? Try using one width. You'll see what I'm talking about. You need width to match up against these players. And then you need the center mids. Like let's say this is the opponent's defense now. And you need your attacking center mids to go through. So you want your... You want to create positions and you want, for example, players to make runs in behind. If you push the left center back or left back forward, should I say, you want to be able to go and penetrate the spaces in between the defenders, the half spaces, etc. etc. So width is also very, very important. Um, for the players in the box, I've gone with seven. I think this is a good amount. Um, I don't I don't really want to go ten, um, although it seems logical, okay, everyone gets inside the box. But sometimes if you get the ball down the wing and it's not a pass on inside the box, you've got no one outside the box to recycle the ball too. So you end up losing the ball and you end up going 3-0 instead of 2-0. So you don't want to go too extreme on this. I see everyone just put everything on 10, everything on 90. I understand the logic behind it, but maybe it doesn't give you the most, I would say, efficient pressing method. Maybe you might get a goal, but you probably will concede more than you will score. The here is the key thing is getting a goal, but still being safe. Hence why we kept the back four on stay back. Um, the corners with free kicks, you can manipulate this how you want. Um, but this is probably one of the best pressing tactics. Um, you can use constant pressure as well. Let's say you're losing inside the game. You can always use constant pressure as well. Uh, but since they haven't patched 71 depth, it's probably the best thing to use. Anyway, I was hoping to this video. Don't forget, if you want to see more videos like this, including more pressing tactics, you can click on my Patreon, so it's patreon.com forward slash no guides for exclusive tactics release. And don't forget to subscribe to my newsletter. Link is down below in the description for absolutely for free for quick tips as well, bi-weekly. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Take it easy, and I'll catch you next time. Peace out.